Welcome, and thank you for watching my video. My name is Grace Fenty, and I'll be talking to you today about quotient rings. First, a little bit of review. Remember that we say R is a ring if R is a set over addition and multiplication, and the set over addition is an abelian group. The set over multiplication is closed, well-defined, and associative. And lastly, the distributive law holds, meaning that multiplication distributes over addition. Second, we say that S is a subring of R if S is a subset of R and S is also a ring under the same operations. Now, you might be asking, what is a quotient ring? Well, similar to quotient groups, a quotient ring is a set of cosets. So, if we have a subring S of R, then we can take any element in R and add it to our subring S. Now, since we want R mod S to be a ring, we need to define two operations, addition and multiplication. So we're going to say that if we add two cosets, so maybe a plus s plus b plus s, that that's really just adding a plus b and then adding s. And similarly, we're going to define multiplication of cosets. So say we're multiplying a plus s times b plus s, and that's really just going to be a times b plus s. But now we have to check if this is really a ring under these operations. Alright, in order to show that R mod S, our quotient ring, is actually a ring, we first have to show that our quotient ring over addition is abelian, and that our quotient ring over multiplication is closed, well-defined, and associative. But now, if you remember, R mod S over addition is really just a factor group, and so we already know that it's abelian. And second, R mod S over multiplication is closed and associative because these properties get inherited from S being a subring of R. So what's left is to show that it's well defined. This means that if we take two representations of the same element and we multiply them, then they behave the same way. So we're going to let A plus S equal A prime plus S and B plus S equal B prime plus S. Well, we can write a plus s times b plus s equal to a times b plus s, and that just comes from our definition of multiplication. And we also know since a and a prime are in the same coset, well then we can write a prime as a plus s1, and we can since b and b prime are in the same coset, we can write b prime equal to b plus s2, where s1 and s2 are some element in s. So in order for it to truly be well defined, we want a prime times b prime equal to a times b, and then plus some element in s, and that'll show us that they're in the same coset. Well, we can just sub in for a prime and b prime, so we get a prime times b prime equal to a plus s1 times b plus s2, and then we can FOIL, and now you see we have our A times B, and we have some element in S, but we don't know about those two terms in the middle, whether or not they're in S. And so we need F's to have some additional property to guarantee that these two terms end up in S, and that leads us to the term of I an ideal. Now, we say that I is an ideal of R if I is a subring of R, and if we can take any element in I and any element in R and multiply them and get something in I. So put a little bit more formally, if I is a subring of R, then for every R in R, we have R times I, a subset of I, and I times R is a subset of I. Going back to the problem we had before, now we can see that if S is an ideal, A times S2 has to be an S, and s1 times b has to be an s. And since s is closed under addition, we know that those three terms are an element in s. And now we have a times b plus some element in s. Let's go over a couple examples to see how this works. First, let's see what happens if we take a subring that's not an ideal. So we're going to let our ring be the set of ordered pairs of real numbers, and we're going to let our subring be the set of ordered pairs rr, where r is a a real number. Now, we want to check if the quotient ring is well defined over multiplication. So that means that if we have two cosets that are identical, so maybe xy plus s is equal to xy prime plus s, 
then we want them to behave the same way over multiplication. So maybe xy plus s times wz plus s is equal to xy prime plus s times wz plus s. Now, in order to check this for our example, we can draw our Cayley table. And we can pick two elements. In this case, I'm going to pick 1, 0 plus s, and we know that that's equal to the coset 2, 1 plus s, and we'll pick a third element to multiply by, 2, 3 plus s. Now, 1, 0 plus s times 2, 3 plus s is equal to the coset 2, 0 plus s, which is identical to 3, 1 plus s, 4, 2 plus s, and so on. And now if we multiply 2, 1 plus s by 2, 3 plus s, we get 4, 3 plus s, and that's identical to the coset 5, 4 plus s plus 6, 5 plus s. And now we have a problem because these cosets aren't equal, and so the quotient ring isn't well defined over multiplication. Now let's look at an example of a subring that isn't ideal. We'll let our ring be the set of integers, and we'll let our subring be the set of even integers, or 2z. Now if we take any element in z and multiply it by 2z, we're going to get something in 2z. So we could take 0 times 2z and just get 0. We could take 1 times 2z and get the set negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, and so on. We could do the same thing for 2, but we get negative 8, negative 4, 0, 4, 8, and so on. And we could just keep going, and hopefully you see that we always get a subset of the set of even integers. And so, when we form our quotient ring, then it'll be well-defined over multiplication, because s is an ideal. In conclusion, we need s to be an ideal in r, and then we can build our set of cosets and use our two operations to have r mod s be a ring. Thanks for watching!